So levity polymorphism in dependent Haskell is the title of the talk. And, and don't worry, you're not supposed to know what levity polymorphism is. Um, so, so let me give uh, a little bit of context for, for this. Um, uh, this, uh, this. This work is, is a sort of a tiny chunk of, of work I've been doing in sort of continued work um, in making uh, Haskell dependently typed. And so one step along the way to giving full dependent types in Haskell is to give GHC the ability to reason about kind equalities, uh, much the same way that GHC currently reasons about type equalities. Right? We can have types that are, that are predicated on our little twiddle constraints. Um, and so, so this is a, sort of a necessary step in that direction. So, so oops. Um, so, uh, so a review of levity. Um, so levity is really just a fun way of saying liftedness, but liftedness is awful, so we call it levity. <laughs> um, and um, so Haskell, uh, GHC has two different levities. There's, we can be lifted or unlifted. So lifted types are the types that we normally deal with in, in Haskell programs. So here are some examples. So int and bool are lifted. These are types with a bottom um, that can be lazy at runtime. Um, functions, all functions are lifted in, in GHC, even ones over an unlifted type like this uh, int hash, arrow int hash. Um, and we can have uh, types that, uh, polymorphic types for all a dot maybe a. These are all lifted types. Unlifted don't have a bottom. Um, and the, in the kind system, lifted, uh, unlifted types have kind hash, as opposed to the lifted types which have kind star. Uh, and there are you know, a, a modest-sized collection of these unlisted types that are just baked in, right? You can't make your own. Um, but some of them are parameterized. Here we have an unboxed tuple. Note the unboxed tuple can actually contain a lifted type in it. Here I've put bool in an unboxed tuple, and that's fine. And, and, and what's interesting about unlifted types is that they can be stored directly in memory. A lifted type has to be stored using a pointer because it could be a thunk at runtime. You may not have evaluated whereas unlifted types might be represented directly. Um, some of you may be familiar with boxed versus unboxed. So boxed is, a, is another term that means represented by a pointer. Unboxed means not represented by a pointer. So lifted implies boxed, but the converse doesn't hold true. Unlifted doesn't necessarily imply unboxed. Uh, OK, so that's, that's the current state of affairs. So let's, let's run and see. There's something strange that happens with all We're going to be in GHCI. This is really just 7.10.2. This is the real GHC. Um, and we're going to need GHCX. Uh, so, so first, let's look at undefined. Um, so I have, I have a couple of flags set here, um, including to, to show explicit for all. Um, and so uh, undefined is, is for, any t for all t type t. So that means that I can say something like this. So if I'm writing a function f on int, and I'm not really ready to give it a definition, I don't have to, and that's fine. And, and that will type check, and then I run it and get it. Uh, but what if I'm writing a function g here on unlifted types, and I don't really want to put a definition for this function? Well, I'll just use undefined. And that gets accepted, and if you're trying this at home, we end up with a problem there, but, but actually it's not that severe a problem. It's because it's trying to call print, which requires a show instance, and we can't have a show instance of an unlifted thing. So I'll just do this. And we get undefined. And so that's all well. But, but let's go back and look at the type of undefined. Right? This is weird. Um, so what it looks like I've done here is I've instantiated undefined at type int hash. Um, so, let's see, did, did I really do that? Yes, I guess I did. So let's look at now id. Well, id, that's pretty similar to the type of undefined. There's an extra arrow in it. So, so let's do the same thing with id. No, and that doesn't work. So something very magical is going on. Um, and, and we can get some idea of what the magical thing is. If, instead of asking for the type of we ask for its info. Aha! Something strange is going on here. 
So it's not any type A. It's, 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 it's a particular uh, type variable A of kind open kind. Um, and, and that's part of what allows this magic to happen. So if I look at it, for example, we don't see that. Uh, this, is, this is really an A of kind star. G, she suppresses the open star because so many type variables are. Uh, so this open kind is, is actually the super type of the kinds star and hash. So what you may not have known is that GHC actually has a subkinding mechanism. Um, and and it, it, it's a tiny little lattice of just star and hash and open kind, but, but it's there. And, and because of this sort of magic thing that's happening inside of GHC, um, we, there's things that we want to do that we can't. So for example, if I just do that, you would think that my undef and undefined would work the same. But if I define a new unlisted function, it's going to complain. Because I can't take this open kindness and copy it into my own system. That doesn't work out at all. Um, so there's a few other weird things going on here. I might try to write something like this. Um, perhaps, except there's no way of bringing open kind into scope. <laughs> um, and and, and I, I should hope not, because there's various restrictions on when you should be able to use open kind that I don't think are checks for, because you can't ever bring it into scope anyway. Uh, so, so here, um, normally GHC doesn't allow me to have a top-level variable of an unlifted type. Um, and part of the reason for that is it's, it's these unlisted types have to be strict. And if we had a global variable of this, maybe it's not very clear when to evaluate it. This isn't a lot. Um, and, and so I can't do that. And yet I have undefined, which is a global variable, evidently, of an unlisted type. And what's, what's further interesting here is not only is it any global variable of an unlisted type, it's the very thing that we said unlisted types don't have. <laughs> And yet, here it is. <laughs> so, so this is this is all very uncomfortable. Um, and let's see if we can do something. Um, so, so here's that that, that subkinding lattice, and and this this you know there's really a little subkind function inside of GHC that does this. Um, and as we're sort of discovering, this is a gross hack. <laughs> um, and uh, and perhaps we should do something. And so the solution is instead of using subkinding, we use polymorphism. Um, and to give credit where, where credit where credit is due, um, this is actually Simon's idea that, that then I've, I've sort of gone off with and, and implemented a bit. Um, and also to give credit where credit is due, the name Levity was, was Stephanie Weirich's idea. So, so I really have nothing to do with any of this. Um, <laughs> uh, so what do I mean, what do I mean by, by use polymorphism? So, so first off, for the rest of the talk, we'll, we'll now be in the future where we have star colon star. Um, and we'll see that unlike last year in this venue, I actually have a working implementation now. So we'll actually see in a few minutes of GHCI session where this is true. Um, and uh, this is actually not strictly necessary for levity polymorphism. If, if someone wanted to do this without star colon star, you, you could do it. It's just much easier with star colon star. Um, so here is levity polymorphism on one slide. Um, we start out with an, a very ordinary data type levity. We could have just used bool, but it's fun to have a new data type, and it's a little bit easier to read. And then we have a very, very magical constant called type. Um, and we, we see here that actually, this is sort of all a little loopy, uh, that the, the star that we all know and love is now just a type synonym for type applied to lifted. Um, and so here, if we expand that type synonym, then the type of type mentions type, which is all a little loopy. And, and whenever I look at it and think about it too hard, I'm afraid that you know, some wormhole is going to open up and suck me away. But it turns out that the theory works out behind this just fine. Um, there's nothing very strange going on. Um, and, and so now instead of having these two unrelated type kinds, star and hash, they're just two different forms of the same thing, type, applied to some levity. Um, so how does this work out with undefined, and I didn't show an example of it, but error suffers from these same strangenesses as undefined. Uh, so now these are just uh, levity polymorphic. 
So we say that undefined for all levities V, of course there's only two possibilities there, um, and then for any type of that levity, it's that type, and then error just takes uh, a string to, to print out. Um, and so, and, and that's, that's sort of the, the, the first pass to levity polymorphism. Um, and it works. So now, instead of just launching GHCI, I will launch my GHCI. Okay. Um, and here we are. I uh, have to import something. Uh, these imports are just to sort of prevent lots of module prefixes. Um, and here, um, I can actually ask undefined it and it does the same thing. But if I ask for the info, it gives us exactly the type that was in that slide. Um, and and this, this this fully works out. So if I if I turn on some some debugging output, then get some stuff, but here is the interesting part. We have undefined applied to unlifted, because that's the, the choice of levity, and then applied to intention. Um, and just, just as we might expect. So um, let's, go, let's go back into the slides, and then we can explore some of the subtleties of this. It's not quite that easy. Um, so one subtlety is uh, we, we want to know what the kind of these levity polymorphic types are. Um, here, we have the, the fact that, um, we, we start out with the fact that when we abstract, when, when we have polymorphism, the kind of the polymorphic type has to be the same as the kind of the body. So the kind of the body is always going to be star or hash. But we need to keep that the same when we have polymorphism. And the reason we need that is because uh, the choice of star or hash affects things at runtime. Right? There's different runtime representations here. And we really don't want type polymorphism to change runtime representations. That would be bad. So we really need that to be true, that, that first statement. But then, what about this thing at the bottom? Right? So following, following that rule, that the kinds have to work out that way, well, the kind of A, we you know what the kind of A is, it's got to be type V. So that means that the kind of this whole thing is type V. Um, and that's terrible. Because V is out of scope. Right? If we ask what the kind of that whole thing is, we don't want to get type V out. Um, and, and actually, in my version of GHCI, if I ask for the kind of this, it will actually say type V, which is terrible. Um, so I still have to work on that. But, um, but the answer is to take, take a look at this type. And we, we, want, we want something slightly different than this. We really want levity polymorphic types to have kind star. Um, and, and so what that really means is is, whoops, is we don't want a for all there. We want something else. Um, and the idea here is that this should actually be a runtime function that, that, and because all functions have kind star, this will also have kind star. So now we don't have this, this um, uh, skull and escape problem going on. Um, and that's really the only part of the pie that, that's happening here. Um, is just to make this a real function. But then that also goes back and solves the problem of bottom being an unlifted type. Um, because here it's not. You actually have to evaluate it a little bit to get the unlifted type. And so that's a good thing. Um, oh, and this yeah, has kind of started. Um, okay, so then another subtlety of this is when do we want to allow levity polymorphism? So we might think, ah, we've, we, we have this nice new feature. Let's use it all over the place. So we have id. Let's make id levity polymorphic. Uh, yes, I guess it would be, need, need to be a pie, yes. Uh, but this, this would be terrible. Actually, I take that back. This would not need to be a pie because there would be no escape. Because the, the, the kind of ARA is star. It doesn't mention v. So you could actually do this with a for all. Um, so the pi is a, a new quantifier that sort of that, that is a type quantifier that also exists at runtime. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's the only part that's that's needed here, and the only part that's going to be implemented in the first version. Um, 
So here, having id of this type would be, would be bad. Because we can't really have a, an id that's polymorphic over both lifted things and unlifted things, because the runtime representations are different. Um, Hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, id is sort of a funny example, because that, that can go away, but other things would. Well, I mean, it's a perfect thing, it's a thing to walk um, Well, you, you would need to then specialize id at many different. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if, if loosely speaking, right, ML has has things like this that you can actually specialize it. At, um, unless it doesn't really carry over to ML, but it makes many different versions of functions. So that that, that would be possible. Yes. Um, uh, so so we're not going to do this. Um, and. What this boils down to is, as long as we don't ever bind a variable that has a levity polymorphic type, we're OK. Um, and that's just sort of the one rule that we stick to. And that, 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 that seems to cover all cases. So this is still being work in progress. I have not yet proved that this is the answer, um, but it certainly seems to be. Um, and so this includes data type parameters, with the exception of unboxed tuples, um, uh, which has special handling. Because um, when you have a data type parameter, then you can pattern match on that, and that, that performs a bunch. Um, so there's further reading about all of this. Um, there's the web page that describes this idea, um, and then I have a draft paper um, about this that describes all of it in a little bit more detail and has all the typing rules and some proofs. Uh, OK, so let's see. I have another 15 minutes. Uh, so let's have some fun with star, call, and star. I thought this audience might appreciate getting Seeing a little bit of what's what's to come in this new uh, this new version of, of GHC. So this is expected to land with GHC 8.0 um, due out next spring. Uh, I'm, I'm currently sort of working on taking the large amount of code that I've written, and then a brief visit with Simon showed me all of the many thousands of lines probably in the end of code that I can delete. So I'm in the process of deleting a lot of code before it gets into GHC. But this is a great thing. Uh, so here are a couple of, of, of features of it. So uh, again, unlike last year at this venue, I can actually compile this and it works. Um, so this is not a lie. Um, so here, uh, the, my, my, my first example, these are not practical, by the way. They're just sort of meant to show off some of the type system features. Uh, I have a proxy type, um, but now I have an explicit kind parameter in the proxy type, which is nice. Currently, GHC brutally requires all kinds to be always implicit, so we have to go to machinations to get our kinds set up. Um, and here, we don't have that problem. Um, and the other nice thing is, of course, this is a little redundant. I know that bool's kind is star. I shouldn't want to have to put it there, so I can just put an underscore in, and that's fine. And the, the really awesome thing about this is I did nothing to make that work. That's just partial type signatures, and it just worked. It's great. Um, so we'll keep that there. Oh, the star, yes. <laughs> Um, yes, I agree completely that, 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 that it's a bad name and we need to, to do something else. My, my proposal for this, which I'd love feedback on, is that. that. That came up on Reddit, and it was one of the few suggestions I've seen that's actually backwards compatible. <laughs> <laughs> the feedback I've gotten is that it's, it may be backwards compatible to computers, but not so much for humans. So that may be a <laughs> Yes. Yes. So this, um, we will not have dependent types 8.0, but um, my uh, the dissertation I'll be working on over the next year is all about implementing dependent types into GHC. So hopefully sometime in the next year we'll have that. Um, it will, no. So there's going to be, you're gonna, it, it won't be the Unicode pi, it'll be pi, lowercase. Uh, and you will sort of choose whether you want to have a pi quantifier or a for all quantifier. One will exist at one time. It, it is yet to be seen whether ha giving the user that control, having as opposed to having it all inferred, is the right design choice. Um, so in Idris, for example, there's a various amount of sort of whole program analysis that that makes that choice for you. Um, okay, so so we have we have this. Um, we don't need to make kinds explicit. 
we'll still infer this. So here there's a chain of things that depend on the previous. Um, and so actually here, more printing for this example. Oh no. Right, this type E actually has a whole bunch of implicit parameters. Um, and that's, that's all fine. Um, here I have a kind index GADT. So if this is this is actually the type index type representation that Simon didn't get to this morning. Um, if we want to have uh, here, notice that int and maybe have different kinds. And that's just fine, um, and it also allows us to have a T app constructor that that just applies one type index to another, and that's fine. And here's a function eliminating it, um, so. Uh, so I can get a default value. It turns out there's really only these two cases, but to know that there's only these two cases requires an inductive proof, and I don't expect, even with the new pattern match checker, it'll be able to figure that one out. Uh, let's see, and, and so here, this, this example is a little banal, but it's the one everyone uses, right? So we, we have unary nats, these are normal unary nats. We have plus on unary nats, normal plus on unary nats, except that uh, but then we have kind index vectors um, using these unary nats, and that's also quite common. And I'll do a pending of vectors, but let's do the types. And so here is the type family version of appending two length index vectors, um, and that also works. Um, nothing really strange here other than the fact that we can have uh, So because kinds and types are the same in this world, uh, uh, we can now just use the type star, which is uninhabited as a type but it means when we're defining data types, we can mention it in our data types, so if we promote that, it works. Right now, this is possible only through an ugly syntactic trick. Yes? No. Not yet. Um, it, and the, the, the plan for the, the sort of more fully fledged version of this is you'll be able to promote, but not demote. Although there's, there's no good reason why we can't. That's just not in the plan for the next year. Um, and we can also have kind synonyms. So I've decided to name star or star monadish. Um, and, and then it just works. Um, so now my monad trans class, instead of having a lot of stars there, I can just say that it takes some monadish thing to another monadish thing. Um, and, and here I can do it in, in a data type declaration, and that works too. Um, and as I said, star really has type star. So I can do that as many times as I want. And it will work. Um, so, so that this is just sort of a sampling of things that work. Um, I'd be curious to hear sort of other things. Does this work? Does that work? And it might surprise all of us whether it does or doesn't. Um, uh, this this is actually available uh, on my GitHub repo, and I do expect to merge this maybe in the next month, like the optimistic month and a half, something sometime like that. Um, so, any questions? So actually, um, I think that would probably work. Um, you know, I remember you, you and I discussed that before. Yeah, I think we actually implemented that way in our knowledge. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that would work just fine. Um, and and in fact, there's sort of the third, the, the fourth uh, spot in that 
in that array is actually occupied in terms of uh, there are there are unlifted constraints sort of buried beneath the woodwork here. My other idea on that, I haven't explored it in great detail, but would be to have something like this. And just auto maybe this uh, But to Yeah, 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 to say that constraint and star are representationally equal. So Yeah, so that means that there could be coercion between them in core. But you wouldn't really be able to in, in, um, in Haskell without. Yeah, you want to make you want to make sure that that's all. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's just it's one possible it's approach. It doesn't solve the triple problem. Um, uh, not implemented yet, but yes, I'm in planning. Yeah, it's you can. So right now, the I think the only challenge is is to is to figure out the sort of the dependency analysis. But even that isn't. I mean, I figured I've sketched out an algorithm for it. It's not that bad. And in the core language, it's no problem. It's hard to come up with an induction recursion. <laughs> um, it, it should it should probably only appear where open kind appears today, uh, uh, and then there's uh, it's not it's not implemented yet, but there'll also be a facility for creating my you know something like my undef or. A, a more practical example is <coughs> something like that. Um, so you can put a prefix on it and still have it be used. And so there's going to be some some user available feature to this. So. Saying that.